just a little bit of history of our farm. Um, we've been around since 1761, not my husband and myself, but the farm. Um, when the Acadians were expelled from the Annapolis Valley, the planters from New England came up to the Annapolis Valley to farm the fertile lands. And one of those planters was Deacon John Newcomb, who received a land grant in the area known as Cornwallis, and to know where our farm name has come from. And our family is still tilling part of this original grant today. Um, as you said, we're in Port Williams, and the farm is operated by my husband Craig and his brother Brian, along with their families. Uh, Craig and I have three children, I always have to kind of throw that in, because as we all know, farming is a family way of life and your children are involved. Uh, we have Robert, who will be graduating as an engineer in about five weeks' time. Uh, David is taking business at St. Mary's currently and he plans to return to the home farm and uh, be the 10th generation of Newcombs to farm next spring. And our daughter Kathleen is currently in grade 11 and not really sure what her future holds. Um, as mentioned, we have a dairy operation. Uh, we currently milk about 65 purebred Holsteins. We have uh, 21,000 laying hens, so peak production, we're collecting about 20,000 eggs a day and the broiler operation. Um, the broilers are grown in five barns, um, <coughs> ranging from an older three-story barn to a more modern tunnel ventilation. And about two years ago, we participated in an energy audit program, and after that, we installed a solar wall on one of our broiler barns. You mentioned the cropping. We're about 1,700 acres currently on the land that's owned and rented and the non-farm feed mill, where we produce all our own feed for the dairy and broilers and laying hens. We've participated in nutrient management plans, the environmental farm plan, and several food safety programs, including Canadian quality milk, the start clean, stay clean, which is for egg production, and with the broilers, safe, safer, safest. And these are all regards to food safety as opposed to I guess farms. Uh, we also have animal care programs and CFIA inspections for the farm. And now to add to the list of things, farm safety has become a forefront. So how did we get involved in all of this? You know, first we have to consider it. Um, at one of the Federation meetings, Trevor Davidson, who's with us today, uh, was speaking about the importance of having a plan and he got the thought process started. You know, I believe we have fairly good safety practices and that similar to our food safety programs, maybe most of what we were doing was a good thing, but documenting them, improving it's another. And maybe this is something we needed to consider um, adding on our farm. Shortly after hearing Trevor speak, I received an email, and I believe it came out from the Federation, but I'm not sure, that the Canadian Agricultural Society were looking to field test with pilot farms and assist them in customizing their safety plan. So I responded to the email and we signed up to be part of this pilot. Now we were committed. Then Carolyn Van de Hoovel, who's the farm safety advisor for this area, came down to the valley to meet with us and she did a review of the program and did a tour of the farm that day. Uh, the first thing we accomplished after Carolyn's initial visit was to create a farm safety policy. Uh, we posted this in the office that's located in our dairy barn. Uh, we chose the dairy barn office as the location because all our employees keep their time sheets there and when we have farm meetings, this is usually the location for them. And speaking of farm meetings, uh, communication with employees is an important aspect of any success successful uh, farm safety program or farm in general. Currently, we have seven full-time employees, not including our family members, and we'd always had the process for the last number of years of weekly farm meetings. Every Monday morning at 8.30, all the farm employees get together to review what's coming up that week and what the plans are. And so at this one of these staff meetings, that's when we introduce them to the process of having a farm safety plan. Uh, they quickly jumped on board, and at that first meeting, they left it richer as a, one of our employees to serve as our farm safety officer. The next steps I like to refer to as divide and conquer. As everybody said, it can be a little overwhelming and there are a lot of 
parts and processes to taking down a plan. Um, Edna, who's Brian's wife, and I sat down at our second meeting with Carolyn and looked at some of the initial parts of the plans that needed to be done and decided which ones we would take responsibility for and what ones we would hand over to Craig and Brian to look after. And by breaking things down, it just seemed to make it a more manageable process to handle. Um, we started creating the file of all the MSDS sheets, developed an incident report form. Um, we created this sheet just in the barn where you can um, write down the different employees, can write down what they think are areas we need to look at. And as you can see, they're very quick to start adding some things. And by dividing the class down, it made the process for us more manageable and a little less overwhelming. With each day or week, we could check one or two tasks as being done. We thought we were finally making progress and could start to see the plan coming together. As part of our farm safety plan, we also want to have as many employees as possible on the farm trained in emergency first aid. And on the previous slide with that shirt sheet, um, that was also an area our employees identified, but many of them did not have emergency first aid training. Uh, I contacted Trevor at the Federation office to arrange to have a first aid training course for our staff. And you have to have a minimum of 10 to have a course, so we also invited the farm down the road to join with us so we could meet the minimum numbers. And I'm pleased to say that we had all of our employees except one uh, participate in the course. It was a very successful venture. So now we have an accident. There's usually more than one person around, so we should be, we should be covered. Um, and we also that day brought lunch in to try to keep our break short. So if you're worried, especially on a dairy farm, of trying to fit a seven-hour course in between milkings, you know, by bringing lunch in and keeping the break short, we're able to work, work with our instructor, and everyone was able to get back in time for afternoon milking. Uh, moving forward, uh, Richard, who is our safety officer, attended the last meeting we had with Carolyn, and he's currently doing an inventory on the fire as to where all the first aid kits, uh, fire extinguishers, and eye wash stations are located, and what areas we still need them. He also made some suggestions for signings that we need to have posted. And currently, we're working on an emergency plan for the farm and developing our inspection schedule and continuing to write policies and SOPs. I guess the thought of that is, we're in the middle of the process, but we're not done yet. So why have a plan? In some cases, it's required by law. Um, especially if you read the Occupational Health and Safety Guidelines, you know, a farm that has more than five employees, you're required by law to have a farm policy or a safety policy. So there are some legal components to having one. To reduce liability in case there was an incident. It's one thing to say you provide a safe workplace, but it's a totally different thing to prove you have a safe workplace. And perhaps the most important one for us is responsibility. Everyone wants a safe place to live and work. The challenge with farms is that they are workplaces and also places where families live. For the people working on the farm, there are some busy, long periods, long days, and a wide range of conditions, and the requirement to work with potentially hazardous equipment, environments, and substances. Hence, the prevention of personal injury and ill health associated with working and living on a farm needs to be a priority. Challenges. Every farm is different, <coughs> and even though we all have similar work practices and risks, every farm needs its own plan to achieve the best safety outcomes. So one plan doesn't fit all. Unlike the food safety plans, there are not a lot of resources templates yet developed, so it does require a little more time to develop your farm plan. So does this sound like too much work, trouble, time? What's in it for me? Well, there's a right way to do a job, and in most cases, the right way also happens to be the safe and most efficient way. By having a plan, you and your staff will become more aware of safety, and it's now in the forefront of our minds instead of the back where it maybe has been in the past. And I'll have to throw this one in because I've been thinking about farm safety, and we think a lot about personal um, 
safety and what happens to us as individuals. But in most cases, accidents do not result in personal injuries. In fact, more often they result in equipment damage, and we often accept this as a cost of doing business. I know in our place, we've often had numerous repair bills for equipment um, that wasn't due to age or swearing out, but because of a small accident. And people often ask, what's the cost of doing a farm plan? Uh, so far, our cost is the minimal. There was the cost of providing the first aid training. Uh, there'll be some cost with some signage and additional first aid kits and eye wash stations. Uh, the biggest cost is not so much financial as time to put it all together. But I think the potential savings in uh, less accidents, repair bills, uh, is well worth it. And I came across a quote the other day when I was working on that. And I believe it sums up the cost quite well. Safety isn't expensive, it's priceless. And people ask, what's the biggest reward? Our biggest reward for having a farm safety plan will be tomorrow. That's our reward for working safely today.